Assalamu alaikum badi ngolo ngal bismillah once again ñu mu sot video li doon kay tandal ko nga audio la so mi lan ko laftal yow la moy audio ñu audio kuma balam abuda dame wala mu bbc focus on africa di ka cha ñim bunda be den men wala ko da gambian economy di anu ye lu ntama men sama na je pour ko ñing ka cha wala ko da fo la gambian brother di ka me mr nyanjay so laftal yow la moy ñing audio la very very important analysis when it comes to the gambian economy ani dalilo me yati na gambe fi ngol dal be selekan andum ma sa ko ndama fenke no Now, Gambia Central Bank says inflation has risen to 17.4% in April, an upward spike of about 2.6% from the previous month. Since January this year, inflation has been on an upward trajectory, with huge impacts on the cost of living. Despite agriculture being a money spinner for the economy, the Gambia imports most of its food needs, placing a burden on foreign exchange. Well, Nyang Jai is a Gambian macroeconomic analyst and consultant. On the line to Banjul, I asked him... What the drivers of inflation in the Gambia are? I think inflation is a consequential effect of a lot of things, and it has internal and external factors. The external factors are commodity prices around the world, i.e., sugar, rice, fuel, etc. But internally, sometimes too, the management of a currency and also fiscal operations of government can cause inflation. The internal factors driving inflation are greater than the external factors, albeit that they will always tell you about the COVID and Ukraine war. I think those are excuses made by our policymakers rather than owning up to the poor fiscal state of this economy. And also inflation has been on an upward trajectory in the Gambia since January of this year, so almost the last six months. Is there a danger of inflation becoming embedded in the Gambian economy? I believe inflation is already embedded in the Gambian economy because if you go out and buy something a few days or a week later, you'll see a price change and anywhere between 3 to 11, sometimes 15%. And what's the actual impact? Because, I mean, economics, as you well know, can sound very abstract. What's the day-to-day impact on the, not just the purchasing power of the Gambian, but on their quality of life? Well, we'll start with the purchasing power. Um, Basically, the most direct impact is that the Gambian consumer happens to have a bad purchasing power, meaning their dialysis are fetching lesser and lesser goods as the time goes on. And also, we know that power, electricity, is a major component of, you know, what the average household spends. That in itself has gone up over 28, 30 percent, So all of these are putting considerable pressures on household to just keep their daily sustenance. We haven't done much to tame inflation, considering that our domestic debt, which would have been something that will tame inflation if the monetary authorities were using monetary instruments as a means to curb or tame inflation, which is not happening right now. And the African Development Bank, meanwhile, has said that the Gambia possesses a risk of debt distress owing to what you just mentioned earlier. You know, it's a fall in exports and a rise in imports. So a lot of foreign currency needed. First of all, what's debt distress? And secondly, how is the foreign currency rate in the Gambia playing into all of that? First fundamental thing we need to agree upon is that debt is good. But once you contract debt, it has to be within a sustainable threshold. For it to be within a sustainable threshold, we need to make sure and ensure that most of the projects we want to fund using debt are either self-liquidating or partially self-liquidating, thereby making it easy and putting less pressure on the economy. But we have noticed from 2017, 2018 upward, the government of the Gambia has locally funded a lot of pet projects. It's not bad to develop a country but you cannot develop by taking or contracting debt that you are doubtful to pay as and when it comes due. You look at the COVID borrowing the government did. You look at the borrowing to finance the Banjo Road projects. You look at the borrowing to finance the Nyomi Hakalang and many, many other infrastructure projects that the government has embarked on. So sometimes political expediency overshadows economic rationale. And when that happens, is the grass that suffers, and in this case, the average Gambian. And finally, and very briefly, Nyang, we've had in the last couple of days IMF bailouts for Ghana, 
and Ivory Coast. Is the Gambia next in line? Well, the funny thing is the IMF, based on their statistical, fiscal and monetary monitoring, they will tell you that the economy is performing. But if you look at the human index, the economy is not performing because the average Gambian is poorer today than ever before. So a bailout is not what the Gambia needs. The Gambia needs a serious structural adjustment and realignment of the Gambian economy to suit the realities of the day. Gambia has, in effect, been transformed into basically a consumer nation. Our agricultural output has gone to its lowest. Our tourism receipts, likewise. So basically, right now, it's telecommunication, financial services, slash remittances. That's really adding a lot of money into the coffers of the government, considering that now most of the goods coming into Gambia are landing in Senegal. So it's taking away quite a lot of money out of a lot of enterprises, especially public enterprises like ports. So what we are witnessing right now is a growth and expansion of the fiscal space. And IMF should have raised the red flag long ago. That's the Gambia macroeconomic analyst and consultant, Nyang Jai, speaking to me from the capital, Banjul.